All right. So uh, you were talking about um, about play, uh, uh, about about be, 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 uh, um, Keenan Ke 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 leaving. And, oh, Keenan. Yeah, Keenan. Keenan left, and you know the next week, Sean came in on trombone. And this girl, Rachel Rodman, came in and played piano, and she sings. Mm -hmm. um, and we would just practice, you know, we learned a few of Johnny songs, and we would just jam on those, and uh, learned a few cover songs, learned an Erica Badu, mm -hmm. um, Tyrone, and uh, Jesus Children of America by Stevie Wonder and nice. Master Blaster. Um, and then it was like, well, let's play a show. And so Johnny got us booked at Tipitina's for a homegrown night. And... Uh, it was really good. We brought like the second most ever to a homegrown night. Um, Seriously? Flow truck. That's awesome. Yeah, nice. We brought, we brought <laughs> 270 people. Holy crap. And it was our first show. Um, so Tips loved us. They invited us back twice, like within two months, you know. Um, well, and it was well, fun. And that, yeah. was, that, was, that was how I got into the New Orleans music scene. It was through Functional Family mm. and Johnny Salute. Nice. And he left, he left at the end of that semester and um, Rachel and I took over the songwriting duties, mm -hmm. and we just wrote basically a whole new set worth of material. Mm -hmm. um, and that was great. I loved, I loved playing in Funk Soul. Mm -hmm. It was such a good release. Um, well, because well, I met a ton yeah. of people then. Well, well, and it's the sort of thing too where it's like, I mean, you look, you, you look at the New Orleans scene, it's like, and it, it is so possible to go from the Beaver practice rooms to Tipitina's in like, like in like two steps. It was right. literally a month from when we started playing to when we we brought 270 people to Tipitina's. Um, and, and, like, and like, do you think it's possible other places? I mean, I don't know, man. I don't think a venue of Tipitina's size would just give anybody that chance. You know what I mean? Like they have that homegrown for right. people who don't play much yet. You know, for people who are yeah. trying to start out. But like St. Louis. Um, like there's like first off there's nowhere like Tipitina's. Like, sure. And um, the closest thing is like um, like um, man the pageant or something. Mm -hmm. And the pageant's more of a house of blues but a little bigger type. Of, you know. Okay. Yeah. And there's no chance in hell you're playing in the pageant. Yeah. Like the pageant is a big deal. You know that's like just below like an amphitheater. Sure. As far as St. Louis is concerned, but I mean New Orleans is all about music. Everybody knows that. So. Um, no, I don't think it's like that anywhere else. Well, well, and, and do, you, do, you, do you have do you have a favorite venue to play? Oh man, oh man, I've played in a lot of them now. Um, I love playing at Republic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, playing with G at Republic, G Easy at Republic is just like I have so much fun. The sound guys are great. Nick Thomas is great. Right. Um, they take such good care of us, you know. Um, they take care of us in the green room and all that stuff, um, and it's so much fun. Mm -hmm. um, you gotta love Tipitina's. Mm -hmm. um, I actually just played my first show at One Eye Jacks. Nice. And I really like One Eye Jacks. It's the spot. They're good guys. It's the They're spot. They're good guys. Yeah. It's a cool venue, and they have great, like, great sound. Like, if if a venue has good sound, I would love it for them. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, but shit, I've played at a lot of them. I've played at Maple Leaf. I've played at here, I've played here at Loyola and Tulane a billion times <laughs> over like McAllister Auditorium right. and Tulane. Which is cool because it's just like a huge space. Uh -huh. That is um, cool. Yeah. Played at Dragon's Den. I've sat in with some people um, at Laziza over uh -huh. on Frenchman. Um, Tips. Republic. Howlin' Wolf. Uh -huh. I've played at Howlin' Wolf once or twice and I wasn't the biggest fan of playing it. Yeah, uh, it's a cool venue. I don't know. It's just awkward. Mm -hmm. do, you, uh, uh, do you feel like it's too big or? It, it's really big. It's huge. You know, like you go to Tips, you bring two hundred and sixty people, and that bitch is packed. Right. You know what I mean? You go to Howlin' Wolf and you bring two hundred sixty people. You're like, damn, there's nobody here. Right. <laughs> uh, and it's just it's such a big, huge, awkward space. Mm. And the sound guys are. Well, you know, the, at least the night that I played there, mm -hmm. the sound wasn't great. Right. And the organization wasn't great and all that stuff. Right. Um, but, well, you know, mm -hmm. it could have just been the night. Well, well, well I, 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 I just, I just started start playing with G Easy. How'd that G come about? G Easy, man. Um, it's funny, my freshman year, I'm the same year as G and all that. Right. Um, 
couldn't take him seriously. Well, right, 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 right. Well, I mean, you, 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 you had my favorite, favorite oh, anti G E Z G E Z quote. I'm gonna edit this out. You, you know about that, right? I mean, I mean, I mean, yeah. But I just, I couldn't take him seriously, and you know, in retrospect. I didn't even know to. You know, I had. I think I, I think we were in the same intro to music business class. And, and he's a nice guy and all. Yeah, no, but you G, and G's a great guy. He's one of my best friends in the world. You know, um, but I, you know, I didn't know him. He's just that guy. You know, that right. G Easy with the the sunglasses with no lenses <laughs> and the crazy colors and the fucking Dookie chain right. and the skinny jeans and the, you know all this shit. Um, but I knew. Well, I knew one of his. I don't want to say his name, but I knew I knew his one. You know, one of the people that he worked with very closely. Okay. Well, he was always hanging out, with. and I couldn't take him seriously. Sure. I knew I knew his friend, and I was like, this guy does not know what he's talking about. Uh -huh. I talked to him about music. I was like, this dude is retarded. <laughs> he doesn't know what he's talking about. Sure. The guy's trying to tell me that a MIDI guitar will always sound better than a real guitar. I'm like, you're crazy. False. <laughs> get, out of here. get out of here. I'm like, you like, don't even talk to him. Um, and he was always trying to hit on my best friend, so that was funny. That's, yeah, right, 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 which, which right. is not acceptable, yeah. Um, you know, and she wasn't having it. She no. would just hang out with him to smoke his weed. Right. And, and she's awesome, though. But yeah, no, yes. I love concerts. <laughs> but, um, you know, so, I, so G was retarded by association in my mind. Retarded, right, yes. You know, the guy that I, you know, always saw him with, I assume, best friends. Right. Was retarded. I'm like, so G can't be legit, because why the fuck is he hanging out with this guy? Right. You know what I mean? Um, and I met him at the end of freshman year, actually. We just briefly, like, we had dinner together, you know, sure. with uh, a few people. Lent him my copy of The Big Lebowski, first time I ever met him. Okay, nice. I didn't get it back until I moved in with him, like, a year and a half later. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but sophomore year, we had digital audio together and um, sat next to each other. Him, me, him, and Sam Phillips. Okay. Kind of all sat around the same part of uh, part of it, and we weren't learning too much in digital, digital audio because we all you know knew knew a little bit you know G especially you know, having produced all of his own stuff and mixing everything knows how to use Pro Tools you know yeah. and you know if you have if you if you mess around with the programs you figure out everything they teach you in digital audio pretty quick so you know we just kind of hang out and just talk shit. Mm -hmm. um, and I remember I went to his Candy Girl video release at the Republic okay. last October, and there was a billion and a half people. There. Right. It was. I think he brought almost twelve hundred people, like at least eleven mm hundred. -hmm. And. Um, oh, 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 and like, why, why do you feel? Why do you feel he has such a big appeal? What? what? Yo, know, G is better than anyone I know. I'm promotion uh -huh. and marketing himself. He's really good at branding. He right. he he gets it like. Everything that they teach here in the music industry department about branding and stuff, uh -huh. G just got it naturally. He under he already knew. You're right. I mean, I mean, he's he's like the walking example of that. He, yeah. No. Exactly. He's like poster boy for. Right. It's perfect. And and, 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 and I mean, for him to have like a million plays on MySpace and all. I mean, it's I like. I remember we were on tour this summer, and we were like, man, by the before we get back to New Orleans, we're gonna have a million plays on like you're gonna have uh -huh. a million plays on MySpace, because he was at like nine hundred and sixty something thousand mm -hmm. when we left. In, at the beginning of the tour, and we were gone for a month right. and a half. So holy crap! He was like, "Man, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna hit a million. And I remember when we found out we were in the car, like somewhere, and it's like, "Holy shit! He hit a yeah. million plays! Like that's not a million visits. That's a million times that people listen to a whole <laughs> right. song. Right, Indiv individually listening yeah. to all a of it. A whole song. Right, it's crazy. It, well, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, that's totally out of control, and, and it's like, I mean. Uh, so, so I mean, uh, so you you, 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 send, you, you you went to the video release. Yeah, I went to the video release. There was a ton of people there, and I'm watching him, and he's controlling the crowd. He's got good stage presence. It's it's uh, legitimately it's like one of the first times I've listened to a lot of his shit. Okay. Um, and I was just like, damn, I would, I'd like to like see what would happen if I worked with this guy. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, because I love hip hop, you know. Right. And. Clearly, he loves hip hop. Right. Um, so, like, you know, what the hell? Let's get in the studio sometime and jam. And I came up to him at the show. After the show, I was like, "Man, let's make some shit." And he was like, "Hell yeah!" Mm -hmm. And um, I was living in Carrollton, the sixth floor in the apartments, mm -hmm. and he was living right below me. Like, not directly, but like, I go down the stairs. He's like right. two doors open, you know. And so we came through one day, and I came down with my guitar, and I didn't really know what to expect, you know. Sure. Um, and 
Sam Phillips was there, and we he played for me. Um, or I was there at first, and then Sam came in a little bit after I first got there, I think. And he played for me this really simple, simple chord progression with some some punchy ass drums mm -hmm. and a tuba on the bass line and he was playing the chords with piano just three three note voices mm -hmm. and if you've ever heard um, Still Ray by Raphael Sadiq uh -huh. it, it, it was in that area sure it sounds a lot like it you know simple piano with a tuba and drums and he's like let's do some shit I know this progression could be really good I know mm -hmm. I can make something really good with it I just I've tried a million things I've spent like seven or eight different sessions trying different shit on it let's see what you got and so I sit down there and I figure out the progression real quick and I play through it a bunch of different ways. And I just like end up getting this real grungy like garage rock sound mm -hmm. um, out of out of garage band actually. <laughs> and I just fucking strum the chords and you know. Sure. Simple and it sounds great. And we're like, we, we clicked on it. He already had a premise for the song and everything. And it became Apple in My Eye. Okay. And Sam recorded the bass line. And it was great. You know, it was this beautiful melodic bass line that unfortunately later got switched out for a simpler bass line just so it hit harder in the speakers. Sure. Um, you know, we did that and it was such a good working environment. Mm -hmm. You know, we cut that shit and we were so excited. We, um, we got together and Sam, we made him, uh, G had another set of drums that he had nothing to and Sam played this, this crazy beautiful Rhodes part on it. And then played a synth bass line, and I played like just a simple little octave guitar line, and that became Passing By, mm -hmm. also off of G's album Epidemic, and um, it was just really good. You know, we all we were all going to the same place when mm -hmm. we were hearing the music. We would hear it, and we'd be like, "This is where it goes," and we would all think of the same thing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and so I would, you know, every once in a while, I just be like, "Hey, G, what up? Let's let's make some shit." And I just mm -hmm. come downstairs with a guitar and a bass. You know. Um, and that's how I started messing with G, you know. Mm -hmm. um, Apple My Eye was really that one. Mm -hmm. Like, that song's spe very special to me. Uh -huh. um, well, well and like, like what, 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 do you, what, what, what do you think it is about, you know, you know, I mean, I mean, um, like, what, what, do you, what do you think it, it is about, about Loyola that kind of creates that environment? Like, it's what's it's weird about it. Like, it really seems like... Well, you know, honestly... I was talking with um, talking to Tyler Yee about it this summer okay. a little bit, and a bunch of people in Loyola. As far as like the arts, like the creative people, you know, the creative mm -hmm. people at Loyola, a lot of us, it seems to me, didn't do great in high school. Right. But we were doing shit. You know what I mean? Right. I honestly didn't have the best GPA. I did well on my my ACTs. I got. Uh, Either I took it twice, and I know I got a 20 the first time. I think I got a 30 the second time. Um, but my, you know, I was. I, just didn't it, it, care. I just played guitar all the time. Right, right, right. It's because people are out there doing things. Loyola doesn't mind that. They don't mind letting people like that in. Mm -hmm. um, in the music industries department, you know, yeah. because people like were, I was spending my time doing it, you know what I mean? And, I mean, getting your skills. And yeah, exactly. Building up what I need to be a professional musician. Right. And I think Loyola got that, you know, mm -hmm. when I was in my interviews. I interviewed with John Snyder, who's obviously amazing. Right. Um, I think they got it, and I think that happened with a lot of cats. Mm -hmm. You know, so the people that come here are about their shit. Mm -hmm. You know, they're, they're about it, it, well, it, their music. Well, and that's the thing is, is that there seems like there's such a high quality of what people put out pretty much there's yeah. not a lot of crap yeah like um you know like i'm not uh, really in the indie rock scene but those right. kids are doing it man my name is john michael right uh, you know, they're, they're, they're 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 playing south by southwest like exactly what? my yeah and my antenna in was great yeah um Fay Fay <laughs> oh my god do i miss Fay right and and and, and uh, you're right and those were the, well that's the that's thing that's funny too is someone's someone trying to try to talk to me about the scene the other day and they're like like well, it's so much better now than it was. Then I'm like, no, it's no, not. Fairy, look, I, you know, I, you know, I went, I saw my name is John Michael actually for the first time when I jacked the night we played. Okay. Because we played the benefit concert. And I was oh, okay, really, nice, nice. He just did a solo acoustic set, and I was really blown mm -hmm. away. Mm -hmm. But Fayre, man, you know what I mean? Yeah, it was it amazing. Was Fayre. It was amazing. They could and be anywhere, and it would feel like you were just 
hanging out. It was like the best time in the world. Yeah, it just it, it, it would just like waft over you, and you just you feel know, so good. And Kevin and his crazy hair right. and the piano and his ridiculous voice and Pat on the drums right. and, and Mike Steven being insane. And Mike yeah. on the horns and Mike on the ukulele and shit. <laughs> Are you see, like it yeah. gets no better? No, it no. gets no better than Ferret. Just good time music. Right. Bye. 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 Right. I will never forget it, Ferret. No, no, and, and and that's and that's the thing, and, and like and like and that's that's what was so amazing about about like at least back in the day, you know. Yeah. And it's and, and, and like I, I mean, where the scene's going now, that's great, but it's just not the same. It's as, not. It's just different. It's just different. It's you know bigger I mean? now too. It's, it's a lot bigger. Um, it's just different, you know. I mm. wouldn't put Ferret in with any of the indie rock. No, they're they're not an indie rock band. Well, I don't know what they are. They're favorite. They were favorite, exactly. <laughs> you know, I wish that Funk Soul Family show, could have played a show opening for favorite. Yeah, I really wish that. We should we, we, we should we should we should try to make that happen. Like like I like, try to like coax Kevin back down here. Kevin, man. Well, it was, well, yeah, and it, 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 it does, does seem like, like it, was, it was really a special time. In the, I love them. Yeah. It was my favorite. It was the first show I ever saw in New Orleans. It was fantastic. Nice. I saw him at their like, back-to-school show at the Blue Knot, mm -hmm. and I was, like, amazed. I went with my friend Ian Smith. Mm -hmm. It was great. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, but yeah. Um, anyway, you know, the shit with G popped off. Uh -huh. um, I ended up... Decided to take some time off from school, uh -huh. um, just because I want to get my head on straight. Sure. And for financial reasons. Right. Um, which, which, which are both very essential. I, 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 would, I would recommend that to everyone. Get actually. Your head on straight, and making sure you're not. You're not totally, totally broke. Life. Which you will be, but but yeah, no. but but less less in debt. Being less now. of a starving artist than right. a really starving artist. <laughs> right. um, starving to death. Artist. Starving to death artist. Um, <laughs> but I moved off campus, and I was playing. You know. Once a week, maybe sometimes twice, three times a week mm -hmm. with Funk Soul Family. We had a lot of gigs. Uh -huh. um, we had too many gigs. You know, if we if we had wanted to uh, like take that band to the next level, uh -huh. we never could have played too many shows. <laughs> really? Yeah. No. It was literally like it was literally like we were playing so many shows that people would stop coming because they'd be like, I just saw them. <laughs> Wait, we would play so many shows that we couldn't do anything new in between shows because we wouldn't have time to come up with anything new. <laughs> but, but because you'd be, we'd you'd be, be playing week. a gig. We'd have a show every we We stopped, we like, we would go a couple months without practicing because we had a show every weekend. Um, <laughs> right, no, too, too, too many opportunities, it's too, too much. much. It's too much. Um, you know, because you know, you paid 10 bucks to see us last week, what would make you pay 10 bucks to see us this week? Good, good point, you yeah. Know, you, should, you should really only do like one show. Oh yeah, I think so, yeah. Um, you know, when you're starting off, it's okay to do a ton of shows so people can get your name in their mouth. But after that, you know, you can't do that for six months. No. <laughs> um, but man, the shit with Funk Soul Family popped off. I can't. I would still come up and record with G. Mm -hmm. And then the idea of what if G Easy had a live band? Right. And, and um, that was dope. Um, G had a show in March mm -hmm. at, at the Republic. And it was the second Republic show, and it was going to be featuring special guest Trombone Shorty. And okay. it wasn't we were it wasn't Jeezy opening for Trombone Shorty. It was Trombone Shorty would come on and play with Jeezy. Oh. See, and that throws to a whole other level of New Orleans shit. Exactly. And so what we did was uh, uh, like how'd you how'd you get that figured out? Like, I don't know. I don't know how G did it. I know. Well, I do know because last year around Mardi Gras time, I think it was Lundy Gras. G did a show mm -hmm. with Juvenile. He opened for Juvenile and Trombone Shorty. And okay. my name is oh, okay, Michael Playlist. Okay, right. Yeah. Um, and so Trombone Shorty was like, yo, I dig it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So he's like, here, we'll, you know, I'll be your guest star at Republic when you play. And so that was great. Like, that's huge. Right. I got a lot of people to come out. Um, because because Trombone Shorty's like a rock star on the trombone. He's a huge deal. And he's like, a he's, you know, he came up and we're all dressed like our fucking retarded ass. 19-year-old uh -huh. trying to be cool, playing in a hip-hop band self. Uh -huh. And Trombone Shorty comes backstage. He doesn't even need to come to the sound check or anything. He comes up not long before we go on, and he's wearing his black suit with mm -hmm. the white undershirt and the white tie, like tux, nice Sharp, glasses, yeah. all the shit. The flyest dude in the whole club, you know what I mean? And he comes up, and he's he's only playing on, on a couple songs. Uh -huh. And I'm only playing on one with him. And he comes okay. up, and he's like, all right, how does the song go? And I'm like... Oh, it's just, you know, like A minor G, F, E. Uh -huh. And he's like, oh, hit the road jack. And I was like, hell yeah. And um, 
you know, so, <laughs> you know, he just gets it, you know, he's, yeah. he's, he's a real ass musician, you know, like, I'm a big fan. Um, and so the band was, the band, the core band for G-Eazy was myself on guitar, mm -hmm. um, Adam Gertner on drums, who's an incredible drummer. If you don't know about Adam, go see Booty Trove. Oh, I, I, I'm not, I've heard about them, I've not seen them yet. Adam anyway. plays drums with them. Adam is an incredible drummer. He's just amazing. I love Adam. He's a great person. Mm -hmm. And Keenan. Keenan played bass. Okay. Um, and so we got up there, and G did his first, like, half of his set, um, standard G-Easy stuff. Okay. And then he was like, hey, you guys, I got a surprise for you. And he's like, I got a band now. And he pulled us up on stage. And we played Apple My Eye. Uh -huh. um, G did a, a remix of Paper Planes by MIA. Okay. We played that. Sick. Um, Sick. And we played Freshaholic. <laughs> okay. Um, which is my song because I get to wild out and take a crazy guitar solo every time. Um, <laughs> and then... Um, and then he brought up trombone shorty in the horn section for the song um, "Good One," uh -huh. and um, trombone shorty went off. It was great. But after that, it was just always like, okay, well, we're G's live band, and we went out to Dockside uh -huh. Studio to record some tracks with the live band. And right. Got absolutely nothing done because we had only been a band for about a week and a half. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and you know, I've been playing with G ever since. Mm -hmm. um, we went on a tour this summer with Adam, who was playing on drums. We got another bassist, um, mm -hmm. Patrick McDevitt from Colorado, who's incredible. Mm -hmm. um, we well, went on a well, tour and, this and, and, and how, 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 did, how did other crowds respond to it? Like, You know, um, it's funny because we played for just about every crowd you could possibly play for. Okay. Um, you know, our first show on the tour was canceled. <laughs> the promoter forgot to write it on the calendar. That's nice. And so we ended up playing this house party with three death metal bands. Oh, very nice. That's, we that's a last. great combo. We went on last. How, how did that go? What, what, uh... It was hilarious. It was just hilarious. Um, the, it was literally, it was a house party, so the sound system was shit. And these death metal bands, like, with their full stacks of amplifiers, and they're moshing with the crowd, like, uh -huh. I've never seen anybody crowd surf in a living room. But this crazy ass dude was crowd surfing in a living room. But, you know, they dug it, I guess, you know? Yeah. We played for some, some country ass music, you know, country music fans I was going to say, yeah, where are you playing these gigs? Well, yeah. you know, the first one was in Tallahassee. Uh -huh. the, second, the, the second one where our show was canceled was in Gainesville. Um, we ended, or it wasn't canceled, what am I talking about? We played a frat party because we were staying at this frat house. Okay. And we played our show the one night. And then the next night they were like, hey, let's just throw a big ass frat party and have you guys play. Um, unfortunately, you know, they were, they were not really hip hop heads. They were, okay. they, you know. They kept, like, you know, afterwards, I, me and Adam and Patrick were just jamming a little bit, you know, because why sure. not? And they kept asking us to play, like, Sweet Home Alabama. <laughs> Which, you know, I like, you know, don't get me wrong. Skinner, I, I Skinner. Gotta love yes. some Skinner, yeah. but that's not exactly in the same lane as g Easy. No, no. Um, <laughs> kind of so different. that was interesting, <laughs> but, you know, when we would play f for people who knew this shit, because there were people who knew this shit, there were fans. Mm -hmm. There was at least one fan in every city we went to. Sick. And when we would play for them, they loved it. They would go crazy. They loved it. Or if we just played for some hip-hop fans. Mm -hmm. You know, if we were on the bill at a hip-hop show. We were, like, consistently, <coughs> like, the best act of the night. Like, yeah. <coughs> and the fact that we have a live band as opposed to just a DJ, we're mm -hmm. at it a lot. Right. It, uh, I mean, it, gives it, a it gives it a bigger sound, right? It gives a bigger it sound and there's just more energy. Okay, yeah. You know, a DJ can only do so much standing behind that table. Right. You know, I'm a guitar player, I'm crazy, I'll just run around and shit. Right. And Adam's, you know, he'll stand up and play the drums, like stand more. Uh -huh. And Patrick McDevitt, <laughs> these crazy bases. And it was great. It was, you know, it was a lot of fun. Well, 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 and, 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 you have a favorite gig on that tour? Man, there was a lot of shows on that tour. It was probably when we played in San Francisco. Oh yeah, why? What was big about? Man, well that's G's from the Bay. G's uh -huh. from the Bay. He's from Oakland, um, and he he spends a lot of time in Berkeley. And so, those were like the OG original G Easy fans over there. Nice. And I'd never I've never been to California or anything like that. And um, G's little brother plays trumpet, and he played with us on a few tracks. Right. Uh -huh. And we stayed at G's house, and his mom is the shit. I love John's mom. And James on his brother is great, and 
it was just so much fun. There was so much love, and we did. It wasn't even a venue. It was. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with San Francisco, but Market Street is okay, like right, yeah. their main street. It's like Canal Street. Uh-huh. Right? And we played at an art gallery, okay. like an old abandoned art gallery, <laughs> where we cleaned out. And the owner of the art gallery had these dudes come in and do graffiti on the wall and shit. Whoa. We had our, our, our whole PA set up, because we drove all around the country with this PA in our trailer, mm-hmm. in case for an event like this. Mm-hmm. And it was exclusive. We did it only through word of mouth promotion, sold pre-sale tickets online, sold out, and just it was just like the dopest party. And G shut it down, you know, we played yeah. our asses off. And it was just a blast, it was so much mm-hmm. fun. That's awesome, yeah. Yeah, it was great, I loved it. Um, well, it was, uh, Washington uh, DC was cool too, because mm-hmm. um, we played at this venue called Bohemian Caverns, mm-hmm. which is like a really, apparently like a well-known jazz club. Like, Ron Carter was playing there next week, Sick. the week after us, and like, <laughs> that's where Coltrane and Miles used to play when they were in DC. Nice. Um, and then after us, Questlove was DJing. He had a DJ set after us. What? Yeah. That's insane. I mean, it wasn't, because there's the venue and then there's a club right up upstairs. Okay, right. And he was DJing at the club, so it was like, we were telling him, yeah, we're opening for Questlove tonight, you know. Um, but it was cool, it was just like a really cool vibe, it was a cool venue. Mm-hmm. That's cool. Well, yeah. well and, and, and who, 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 would you, who would you want to work with that you haven't worked with yet? What do you mean? Like in okay. New Orleans? No, I mean, I mean, I mean, well, I mean, I mean both. Shit. Um, man, that I haven't worked with yet. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'll say this. Uh, well, shit. I want to say Erica Flowers. Okay. Just because, but I'm already working with her. Right. We're just yeah. not there yet. You know, we're writing her. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. I be, because like I want to do hip hop neo soul shit. I want okay. that to be what I do. Mm-hmm. Um, and and not a lot of people do that down here. No, nobody does it. I mean, people, I mean, people, people do hip hop, but not with like a soulful. Right. You know, um, Floopyhead does it. Okay, that's right. Yeah. Floopyhead's the shit. But I don't know if I necessarily want an MC as much as I want a singer. Okay. Um, yeah. Or both, you know, like on some Warren Hill shit. I don't know. Um, but damn, like, I got a friend, uh, Hugh Augustine, the MC. He's mm-hmm. a freshman here, and he's just a great MC. And I really, he's he's back in LA this semester, but he'll be back next year. Mm-hmm. I'm really looking forward to working with him. I've I've been producing a lot of stuff and sending it to him. I really want to work with him. But as mm-hmm. far as like big people here, man, I would love to do a show with Reverb. Yeah. Obviously, you gotta. <laughs> you gotta love the Reverb. You gotta. I would love to do a show with Reverb. Right. I would like to, you know, like open for Galactic or some shit. Yeah. That'd be cool. You know what I mean? Galactic. <laughs> right. Galactic is the shit. Um, <laughs> man, we got this show coming up on Lundy Girl. We're playing with Big Sam's Funky Nation and Juvenile. Holy crap. Right. That, that, you, 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 you're opening for that shit? No. Big Sam's Funky Nation's open. We're going on. We're the support. Woo! We're going on at the peak of the night, and then Juvenile follows us. That's insane. Yeah. With G. Holy crap. I know. Um, like, like I mean, I mean, I mean, that, that's pretty epic. That's yeah, that's gonna be just, a show. It's mostly like I just want, I just want to just have the family continue to incre- grow, you know. Sure. Um, yeah. Because right now the family is big. It's a big family, you know. I have the everybody I played with from Funk Soul Family. Right. Um, you know, Mike Brown, the trumpet player from that, had his own little band mm-hmm. called Twelve Tone Technique that I played a few shows with. Um, New Grass Country Club. Mm-hmm. Those kids are great. Um, I sat in with them at one show back when they were still always playing the neutral ground. I sat in uh-huh. with them, and that was a lot of fun. Um, Dirty Bourbon River Show, I played mm-hmm. with them all summer. I sat in with them the other night at One Night Jacks. Um, everybody, I love 27 Lights. I just saw them mm-hmm. um, a few weeks ago, I guess a couple months ago. Mm-hmm. Shit, they're dope. Oh, and that's, it, it doesn't make such like a community. Like that's it's, it's a big family, you know? Yeah. And all the MCs around, you know, obviously Gerald, Jeezy, right. um, you know, Vic, awesome. Okay. Um, and then all the freshmen, you know, like Hugh Augustine, uh, Mastermind, Muhammad, Austin, mm-hmm. who I've actually known since he was in kindergarten because I know <laughs> big sister Khadija. Um, it's all of them. Like it's it's just really it's an exciting time, mm-hmm. um, because everybody really brings their own shit. They really everybody's doing it. 
Right. And so it's good to, it's just like a family. Like we'll be at the house. I woke up this morning and, and, and Mo and Dee Bridge were at the, they just did kicking in the living room, just working on some music with G. And it was great. And it's like every night is like that. Every day is like that. It's like that apartment from across the universe. <laughs> This is great. I love it. Right. Well, um, yes, I mean, because people are always looking to collaborate and always exactly. looking to Everybody's work. Everybody's down just, we all just want to make music. We all just want to make good music. You know, like, I made yeah. a beat. Uh, it was the second beat on my mixtape. It was called Maybe Tomorrow. Mm. And um, Awesome and Augustine had an EP they were working on called Awesome Augustine. Okay. Is there, um, and Vic hit me up one day and he's like, Franco, I need it. I need the beat. You got, I like, I need it. Like, how much do you want for it? Like, I need the beat. And I was like, dude, it's yours, man. Take it. Just, it's yours, man. Like, it's yours. Put it on the album. I don't right. care. It's yours. I would love for you guys to rap on that shit. And it's great. <laughs> it's my favorite shit. They used it as one of the singles. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because it, yes, it's, it's like everybody's really supportive of the scene and like. Yeah. Oh, it's, and then it's, the singers. I didn't even mention the singers like Greg Banks mm. or um, Blair Taylor. Mm -hmm. He's a great producer in his own right. Blair Taylor's an amazing producer. Um, and then Riva, Priscilla, who goes here. Mm -hmm. and I, it has no excuse for not being famous already. Like, Riva has such a great voice. There's so much character in her voice, mm -hmm. so much personality. She's beautiful. Like, she's got the person, like, she's just got it. She's mm -hmm. got the whole package, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and Erica Flowers, mm -hmm. who I love Erica. Right. We're working on our own shit coming very soon. We don't have a band name or anything, but we do have music. Um, so look out for that. Just everybody. Yeah. Jasmine Blue. Everybody. Mm -hmm. It's exciting. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It definitely yeah. is, man. Well, and, and uh, I mean, yes. Yeah, so, so, I mean, where, I mean where, where do you see, see yourself going with with all the different different projects you're you're, you're, you're working with like like like, like yeah. I mean I mean, what, I mean what, what do you see like what, what do you see yourself well, I think I mean I mean with? everybody wants to be a rock star you know okay like, I, of course I would love to be a rock star you sure know, that would be amazing you know um, but realistically my realistic goals are like I want to be a producer I want to produce for people okay you know? um, it's something I've really fallen in love with in the last year. Um, I love producing tracks. It's just like mm -hmm. so much fun, you know. Because when you get it and you listen to it for the first time after it's done and it's there, it's exactly what you had heard in your head. Right. It's there's not. It's the most addictive thing in the world. It, well, 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 and yeah, it, it just it's that rush when things come together. It is. It's and, perfect. Yeah. It's just like, like oh my god, I can't believe I made that. Right. You know what I mean? Like I, that's all me. Um, I want to produce. I love that. I work, I love working with MCs and shit, and I just love hip hop. And, and I, and then I want to be a touring guitarist. I want to mm -hmm. tour with somebody, you know. Mm -hmm. Ideally, I'd love to tour with G-Eazy forever. You know, I'd love oh. to just be his guitar player in his band forever. Okay, well, yeah, and, you know, we well, can continue to collaborate. And, 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 and like, I mean, can, can you see that happen? You think, I mean... I, you know, it could really, it really could happen, you know. Mm -hmm. um, you know, any, and, you know, I can't really speak on that, though. Cause right, it's, right. It's I mean, G's it, career, and right. it's his... his it's all up to him. Right, you know it, I mean? It's the future. But you know, Dude, as long yeah. as long as as long as he'll have me, I love I love playing with you. Mm -hmm. You know, we, just, cool. we collaborate with, really well. It's one of my best friends in the world, and I have more fun when I play with you than I do any other time. <laughs> nice. Um, you know, but like you know, you see these these guitar players that are in like Jay Z's band or Lil Wayne's mm -hmm. band or Lupe Fiasco's band or. Whoever's right, band. right, right. Whoever's going. I want to be one of those guys. Yes. I want to be one of those guys. You know. Right. I want to be able to go to the Roots Jam session. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. That'd be cool. Yeah. I that'd would be. love that. I would love nothing more than to go up there and and look over and see Questlove playing drums. Right. You know, or look up and see Black Thought rapping. You know, or yeah. Gerald rapping, or G Easy rapping, and Questlove over there on the drums because we're jamming with the Roots. <laughs> right. Yeah. Like just some shit like 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 there's nothing more exciting to me. Mm -hmm. I would love that. Yeah. Well, well, and like, and like, I mean, I mean, well, well and, and the thing that's cool about that is that like, it's possible to it get to that happen. point. Yes. It could happen, you know. Like, I, you know, in, in within the next five years, I really see myself living in New York for a year and okay. just doing music. Uh huh. Because, why the hell not? Right. You know. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, man. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 because it just—I mean, what it, 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 it's like—it's it's amazing the way things have just built up o over the years, and the, and, the, and the, yeah, you can go from yeah living in the Beav to Beaver to you know, you know, we live in an apartment where we're all there's 
there's never a moment where somewhere in the house there's not some secret. Mm -hmm. You know, whether she's working on a beat, I'm working on a beat, I'm fucking around playing guitar. Sure. Jeff's girlfriend is listening to Lady Gaga. Mm -hmm. We're all kicking it, in Juice's it, it, room listening to Maxwell until mm -hmm. four in the morning. It, it's just this constant music. It's always music. Um, yeah. You know, and eventually maybe it'll all be our music. You know, yeah. That'd be cool. That's good. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Thank you.